really lined them up perfectly with that docking axis. So they were already several meters off once this hold occurred. And so they're making very low impulse commands being sent to those Draco thrusters. Again, as Shiva was saying, there's the 12 around the lower part of the Dragon capsule that they're gonna be using. And we're seeing small bursts now And SpaceX Dragon, we've completed the docking access capture maneuver. We're going to move on to the YZ translation. Copy, we're with you. All right, sounds like they've got themselves lined up exactly on the docking axis, so directly in front of that international docking adapter on node two. Now they're going to begin some lateral and axial maneuvers. So again, just putting Dragon uh, now off the docking axis and to just continue these translational maneuvers. So at this point, we should see them head up to the right and up from this view as they're just making very small adjustments in the Dragon's positioning in front of the space station right now. And here comes the, the translation. We copy. Yeah, in the data, it looks like we're seeing the, the six thrusters essentially on the bottom of the spacecraft right now from this view lighting up. So it's gonna to begin to move them straight up. And it's difficult to tell, but there is a very slow drift upward right now. Yeah, it looks like they're going about uh, 0.1 meters a second, if, uh, if I'm looking at this data correctly. So very slow and steady. And they will probably do a quick correction to, to stop that upward movement.
It's a little surreal seeing Dragon so close to the space station. Uh, you know, less than less than 18 hours ago, I was on the pad at uh, at Launch Complex 39A. Now it's so close to its destination. Yeah, being piloted by humans for the second time already in this mission. And I, I would just be too excited. I don't know how Bob and Doug keep this so professional. It's that test pilot mentality. Yeah, they both have thousands of hours in, uh, in aircraft. Both test pilots? Yeah, both came from military test pilot backgrounds. Bob Bank in the Air Force. Doug Hurley, a uh, Marine Corps aviator. And then I believe uh, Naval Test Pilot School, so. They both have thousands of hours in. Uh, a little bit overexposed there, but you can still see the thrusters firing. Yeah, our Kronos working to do that deliberately for us so we can see those thruster plumes from this camera view. We're at a normal exposure, um, so not able to see those jets uh, into the darkness of space. Uh, but when we just a little bit, you're able to see those thruster plumes coming out of the Dragon spacecraft. Yeah, it's amazing how the, the plume has to catch the light just the right way for us to even see that it's happening outside of data. Yeah, and looking at the, the data now, it looks like we have zeroed out that, uh, that radial velocity delta. So Bob and Doug cleared out the, that small translation test that they did. We may get a radio call down here that they've completed the, the Y direction testing. Now, I, I know we've mentioned this a few times, but it, it looks like the spacecraft are totally still right now. And, and that's partially true. They're still relative to each other. But right now, both the space station and Dragon are uh, going around the world, uh, what is it, about once every 90-ish minutes yep. or less? Once every 90 minutes, seeing 16 sunrises and sunsets every single day. And while our view right now Translation moving on to the Y. We copy, we're with you. I copy, so I was a little bit mistaken. They just finished up the, the Z direction, doing the Y next. Dragon, SpaceX on Big Loop, you have used approximately one-third of your prop test budget. And Dragon copies one-third of the prop test budget. So the core letting the, the crew know how much, uh, how much prop they've worked through. Um, still have two-thirds of their budget left to do test maneuvers. And of course, any, any bit of propellant that they're using is just a little bit less margin um, if they needed it to use it for something else. But a good, good way to exercise the system, see that manual piloting works intended, and I'm sure for them to, 
to have a chance to provide some feedback on how manual piloting actually felt in space and how the control felt. Yeah, a big part of their job for this mission is really to not only put the vehicle through its paces, but to take a lot of detailed notes and mental notes that they're going to be passing along to any future crew members flying on board Crew Dragon. Uh, as we've talked about, the simulators have been a pretty good guide uh, for how the actual main goes, but things like the ascent up to orbit were quite a bit different from what they expected. And so they're just taking all of that in, internalizing it. Big part of their job once they come home is to pass that along to all of our upcoming crews, one of which is targeted to launch just about a month after the, that Crew-1 uh, outfit of three NASA astronauts, Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, and Shannon Walker, and a Japanese astronaut, Soichi Noguchi. We'll be aiming to do that flight a little bit later this year. Um, so going through the paces right now, looking at our data, I think I made the you did, where I assumed uh, them going up would be the y-axis. It looks like that was actually their z-axis, and the y now them moving to the right, seeing some small shifts. They're continuing to use up a little bit of their prompt budget. We heard they're already a little past one-third yeah, it's actually something uh, interesting about uh, both aircraft and rockets. When you consider the, the coordinate system, what we refer to as the x-axis is usually the one that goes through the nose. So in, in the case of Falcon 9 and Dragon sitting on top of each other, the x-axis would have been pointing through the nose cone going up. It can be a little bit counterintuitive. And actually in, in aircraft, the z-axis usually points down depending on whether you use uh, European or, or uh, American coordinate systems and the type of aircraft you're working on. But in uh, Space Station and uh, Dragon to be on the same coordinate system as they do this, this uh, eventually as they step into the approach maneuvers here towards Waypoint 2. Dragon will be using its uh, relative navigation sensors, again, for relative position to the station um, to make sure that it's on the, the approach, uh, within the bounds of the approach corridor going towards the station when we get to that after this manual piloting test. Should be getting to that shortly. This manual piloting test was slated to last about 25 minutes. And as we have been running ahead of schedule today, uh, Dragon's maneuvers, uh, we could be looking at a docking only. So once they're done with this manual flight test, they'll turn control back over to Dragon's flight computers and they'll resume their approach, which had actually already started before the crew issued a hold command to the vehicle. And then they'll press in to arrive at waypoint number two, at which point the teams will do a final go for docking. They'll depart that 20 meter hold point and it should be just about five minutes following that departure until we get contact and captured. Yeah, and the, uh, the crew right now are seated in Dragon in, uh, in the pilot and commander's seat. Both of them are suited um, for what are relatively dynamic maneuvers. And they'll uh, continue to be suited until we, we have confirmation of, of good capture on the space station. Or just interfacing with the touchscreen displays, testing out manual piloting. Hopefully secretly to be piloting uh, a spacecraft. I mean, before they had launched, Bob Bankin had referred to this mission as Grenade's dream, getting to launch in a new spacecraft, putting it through its paces. with those test pilot backgrounds testing out a new spacecraft has to be as good as it gets uh, but they're still stepping through this manual piloting 
Uh, we should have just a few more minutes until they're done uh, with this Y-axis translation. And then they'll be able to turn command back over to Dragon, which will return itself to the docking axis and then begin that approach into waypoint two. Yeah, and as a, as a look ahead, so when, when we do transition into that approach, uh, Dragon will go towards waypoint two, which is just 20 meters away from the forward uh, international docking adapter on node two. And uh, there, that'll give the, the ground team some time, both in Houston and at, uh, at here in Hawthorne, to do a go-no-go -no -go poll, make sure it looks healthy, uh, make sure that everyone on board the space, space station and, and, of course, on board Dragon. SpaceX Dragon, the translation maneuvers, we're going to pick up with the closure maneuver. We copy, we're following along with you. Sounds like they're done with their translations. They're going to start moving it back to the docking axis. Put us right back on the center line. Zoom that approach into station.